Hi guys, and welcome back to Reed's Readers with your host, Clinton Reed. And today I'm going to bring with you my October wrap-up. I read a total of 10 books this month. I think one of my best months so far. I read all of these. Now, I'm going to discuss them in order of how I read them and if I read them in a readathon. Some of these aren't actually written down, but I could figure out what challenges they completed and stuff like that. The first three books on this list I read before any of the three readathons started. The first book I finished was a poetry collection called to Make Monsters Out of Girls by Amanda Lovelace. It's just so, ugh, so pretty. Literally, is a book with all, like, different type of poems. And it's hard to explain a poetry collection, and it has, like, little big pictures. I rated this a five-star rating. For one, I am absolute garbage and trash for Amanda Lovelace. Anything she puts out, I want to know it. I have her other two books down here. The Princess Saves Herself in this one and The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one. I will be collecting all of them. To basically sum this poetry collection up, I will read the two lines that are on the back. This is how I will finally bury you. Ooh, it's giving me chills now. But if you love, if you loved The Princess Saves Herself in this one, or Milk and Honey, and any other modern day poetry, you definitely need to check this out. If you have not read Amanda Lovelace, check out Amanda Lovelace. Everyone is sleeping on her. She is a goddess with her words, just saying. That's all I'm going to talk about that one. Poetry collections, it's kind of hard to talk about. Okay, the second book I read this month, I gave a 4.5 star rating. And you will see the next two books in the series later on in this video, which I gave five to both of them. It's one of my new time, all-time favorite series now. And that is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. I buddy read this the first week of the month with my best friend Chantel. So we buddy read the other ones. Granted, I finished one. She hasn't. Whatever. But Stalking Jack the Ripper is pretty much about Audrey Rose, who lives in the time of when Jack the Ripper was around, which I want to say... 1886. Thank you, journal entries. And this is all about her wanting to... She studies underneath her uncle as an apprentice. And her uncle carves up dead people and looks on the insides of them to figure out how they died. In a time period back then, women were not common of doing that. Actually, they were normally frowned upon. And also, you'll notice, this is the first book I have ever tabbed and highlighted in. Just saying. I highlighted a few major quotes from it, like the first quote, I have ever tabbed was roses have both petals and thorns my dark flower you needn't believe something weak because it appears delicate show the world your bravery um assets of the blade du -du 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 -du. yeah the other ones aren't as empowering as that and if you haven't read this series definitely check it out November is definitely a, a month that I feel like everyone should read more strong females. <clears throat> Female then the female fatale, the femme fatale event is happening in November. From November 1st to November 30th. Where we read strong women all year or all month long if you need a strong female character. Check out Audrey Rose. And Thomas Cresswell. Thomas Cresswell. <sighs> but I will say, this totally gave me 
um, Sherlock Holmes vibes from the very freaking beginning. Let me read you the back, and it will basically tell you why I was interested in this. He murdered women in cold blood. He terrorized an entire city. He taunted those who have hunt, who those of us who hunted him down. But despite all these horrors in the end, I could not deny it. I was the girl who loved the river. Ooh, girl, snap. But yeah, definitely check it out. Such a good... And I will definitely be checking out everything Carrie Maniscalco releases from here on out. Good pick, James Patterson. Because it's a Jimmy Patterson person. But. Which I really like his imprint where he's finding new authors. Next I read one of my favorite books of probably all time. All year, all everything. And a lot of people have loved this book. And I could see why. It's normally not a book that I would normally gravitate towards. But it shattered me in all the best possible ways. But yeah. And that is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Five out of five out of five out of motherfucking five stars. You have not read this. Check it out. This book follows Evelyn Hugo, who is pretty much the, she's in her 80s, and she's telling her life story to a news reporter by the name of Monique, who is a no-name. No one's ever heard of her. But, I also, but Evelyn Hugo is pretty much the, can't remember if it's Cuban or Dominican Republic. I always get them backwards. Maybe Cuban. Version of Marilyn Monroe. If Marilyn Monroe was to tell her life story, if Marilyn Monroe made it to 80 years old and told all of us the truth. That is the story of Evelyn Hugo. As she tells us about her seven husbands and who she truly, truly loved. Every twist and turn in this book I did not see coming. But yes. Definitely a book I think everyone needs to check out, and I will probably reread every single year. Thank you, Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I actually kind of want to check out more of her her writing, because I really enjoyed her writing in this book. But I'm going to look up some ratings on some of her others and see which ones are higher and which ones are lower and see which ones, like, benefit me. But yes, five out of five stars. Easy, easy, five out of five stars. Oh yeah, that is coming up. I need to finish. Okay. The next two books I read for the Charms Extra Credit Magical Readathon. This first one I read for Incendio. Words, Fire, Flames, and the title or Flames on the Cover, I read Coraline by Neil Gaiman. Not my favorite Neil Gaiman work so far. 3.5 stars. I prefer the movie. If I would have read this as a kid, I would have enjoyed it more. But to each its own. It's about Coraline who steps through the door to another house, which is strangely familiar to her own only thing different is there's another mother <clears throat> and another father that want her to stay over there and don't want her to leave. So I could see how it would scare the crap out of kids. Me, I'm just like, eh. The movie scared the hell out of me growing up. This was kind of a letdown. But, eh, things happen. Next, I read for Accio, a book that's on top of your TBR, because I needed to return it to the library, and I still haven't returned it to the library, so I'm a little late, and I think I'm going to do that tomorrow on the way to Lawrence's, but that is Run for Your Life by James Patterson. Book two in the Michael Bennett series, because it's a book two, I don't really want to say much about it, 
Um, what was my rating? It was a five star, right? Yep, five stars. Loved it. Michael Bennett is an Irish cop with ten kids. Detective, this is all about finding a murderer that is killing random victims, or they just seem random. I did not see the ending coming, and I can't wait to read book three, which might have to wait till next year, because I started the read-along for Women's Murder Club, but whatever. Yeah, really good book. Plus, it's all about females, not males. Next for Spookathon, I read Hocus Pocus and the all-new sequel. This is for a book with purple on the cover. This is a book with a spooky word in the title, Hocus Pocus. Technically, there's parts of this that aren't set in the current time period, so we're going to go with it. Because the beginning is a flashback when the wolves get... The wolves. The witches get hung. Um, so... Discounted for three out of the five challenges. I will state Spookathon is the only readathon this month that I accomplished all the challenges. I freaking loved this. 4.5 out of 5 stars, only because I felt like... Where is it? Only because I felt like I dropped a point five star for this right here. The movie put in book form kind of bored me to pieces. But the second part should have been a novel on its own. They should have just been separate novels, not all together. Oh my god, this gave me all the nostalgia feels, all the things that I wanted from it. I went into it knowing it wasn't going to be like the greatest thing in the world. But to me, it, excuse me, is. To me, it is one of the greatest things in the world because it continued on my love of one of my all-time favorite movies. This book, the second part, follows the children of the child of Max and Allison. Their daughter, Puppy, and her two best friends, which I can't think of their names. Off the top of my head, Elizabeth, and I can't think of the boy's name, Travis, Travis and Elizabeth, as they release the witches once again, and shit goes down. Literally, I will state the last part of this, like about here to there, literally scared the hell out of me. This would have been in the children's movie. I don't know if I would have been able to, to watch it. But yeah, 4.5 out of 5 stars. Loved it. Recommend it to everyone. I know it's not going to be a book that everyone loves. But if you're a huge fan of Hocus Pocus, at least the second half will give you that nostalgia feeling. And it will look good on my witch. It looks good on my witch self, too. Um... The next book I finished for Spookathon was to read a book with pictures, and I read the graphic novel House of Night Legacy, which I think bridges books one and two of the House of Night series. This pretty much is like a short story collection of five stories that help you that Zoe has to learn five lessons based on each of the elements like earth, air, water, fire, spirit, as she connects with her connection with the goddess and they use real life women of history like Cleopatra, Freya, Boudicca, um, Circe, Hippoly, Hippoly, um, and all of that, so, 4.5 out of 5 stars, I loved it, 
eh, it's not as it gave me my house of night vibes what i wanted at the time and i needed something short because i was just in the mood for some really good graphics and this has some really good graphics and i realized i've never read the short stories it's just like a little side story to go along with my house of night love not everyone's gonna love it but i did and the last book i accomplished for Spookathon was to read a thriller let's just state one of my all-time favorite thrillers actually i think it is my favorite thriller of all time I read The Last Time I Lied by Riley Saker. I honestly don't know what to say to this. Except it's fucking phenomenal. Five out of five stars. Um, had me shook. I might still have a clip of my reactions to it. I was going to vlog for Spookathon, and my vlogs, like, it I lost half of them, and whatever. I might still have a clip of this, of my reactions to this, and if I do, I will link it to the end of this video so y'all can see it. But yeah, five out of five stars. Thrillers, I don't really want to... To me, thrillers should go in blind. Everyone should go in blind in a thriller. I will state, I really want to read Final Girls, because Riley Sager is a genius. I don't know if it's a guy, if it's a girl, whoever Riley Sager is, well, they a genius. This literally gave my anxiety, like, towards the end, I was like, oh my god, no, girl, run, get out of the way, go, there, no, go, no, go, I was yelling at the book, I was screaming, I was crying, I was, oh my god, this book was just so good, but yeah, and Last but not least, the last two books I read, I read for Witchathon, which I accomplished all but two of the challenges. I didn't read a book with ethnic heritage, and I didn't read the group book, unfortunately, which the live show starts in a few, but nah. I may still watch the live show, the middle grade book, whatever. But I read books two and three of the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. Hunting Prince Dracula and Escaping from Houdini. Five out of five stars, five out of five stars. Hunting Prince Dracula follows the events of Stalking Jack the Ripper as they go to a forensic school in Romania, where, which is literally in Dracula's castle, and deaths happen and magic happens and just Stuff happens. And then, escaping from Houdini, they're on a ship headed to America. And all I got was Topsy Turvy from Hunchback of Notre Dame. The entire time, the entire time the carnival was on the boat, all I got was Topsy Turvy. And all I wanted to watch was Hunchback of Notre Dame. Just everything I wanted and more. I have a quote in here that, to me, sums up this series. And why I love Thomas. Cresswell so much. But this quote is, For there are no limits to the stars. Their numbers are infinite. Which is precisely why I measured my love for you by them. An amount too boundless to count. Thomas Cresswell is now my new boyfriend. And like, everyone else can go to hell. Well, maybe not Elijah. But, sorry Sand, you've been knocked down a peg. Because Thomas Cresswell is, like, a god and, like, gorgeous. And, like I said with Stalking Jack the Ripper, these gave me Sherlock Holmes vibes so freaking much. Pretty much after reading these dictated what I was in the mood for, which y'all saw in my November TBR. But yeah, completing both of these was I completed challenge number one which was to read a book that makes you warm and happy. I lit a candle to honor our kin and read with them. Um, their spooky horror with kind of thriller aspects in them. Um, doesn't really have paranormal elements. Well, this one makes you think there's paranormal elements, but based with science. 
So, no. I didn't feature my ethnic heritage, but I did buddy read both these with Chantel. And I didn't read the group books. So, one, two, three, four challenges out of seven. Not bad. Like I said, you need a really strong female for Finn Fatale. Check out Audrey Rose. Just check out Audrey Rose and you will love her. Okay, those are the 10 books that I read this month. Which I think is actually one of my proudest months yet. Ooh, and I'm dropping everything. Sorry, guys. I'm gonna drop everything. Stupid James Patterson. These are the ten books that I read this month. And I think only one of them disappointed me. Other than that, everything else was like a 4.5 or higher. My best month of the entire year happened to be my favorite month, where I also felt like I read the least. But whatever. And um, that's all I've got for you guys today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed your October. Comment down below and let me know what you read in October. Did you do take part in any of these readathons? What books did you accomplish? But I want to end it with this saying, remember bookworms, reading is what? Fundamental. Until next time, happy reading. Bye.